Hello, Garrett. Thank you very much uh, for being here with us at the very first edition of the Explorers Festival. I hope you're enjoying it so far. And you just had your, your talk at, at the conference, and your talk was about personal branding. Can you tell us a bit more about the McNamara brand? Well, you know, it, it all s started kind of as a fluke. It was because I'm so passionate about surfing, and I started surfing, and then it evolved into being working on s keep surfing. So to keep surfing, you got to brand yourself or be with companies that brand you. And believe that if you're passionate about something, then it's really easy, it's natural to brand it. And if you're, you're not passionate about it, you just never really will be happy about your brand. And, and a good thing about things, a good thing to do with your brand is always to be giving back in one way or another and, and it, letting people attach your, themselves to what you're doing and be supportive of what you're doing by giving back. Can you give us some insights on how you can build a successful brand? What does it take? What does it take? It takes a good plan, a really good plan, and a good map in your plan, a business plan or a road map. Um, partners, really good partners. Um, you can't do everything yourself. You gotta surround yourself with people with really good energy that are positive. And, and you might go through 10, 50, 100 different partners to find one good one. So never give up, be persistent, and work on finding good partners. Uh, your team is everything, your partners, and it's very challenging because you'll meet somebody and you'll think they're perfect and then uh, they change, and then they're not the right person, and then to, to get discontinue working with somebody is really challenging because you develop a personal relationship. Let's go back a bit in time, and can you tell us when did you realize that you want to become a surfer? Was it something that you knew when you were a little boy, or you found it out with time? When I was about 11 years old, I started surfing, and I instantly fell in love with it, and that's all I wanted to do was surf. And from that day forward, it was just my passion. It was what I loved. And I never imagined being a professional surfer. When I was about 16, no, 17, when I was 17, my sponsor put me into the Triple Crown. And back then, if you win money, you're automatically a professional surfer. And I, I made it to the main event in two of the three events and, and won $250. And I was automatically a pro surfer. I was like, wow, a pro surfer. It was really a fluke. It was uh, all natural. It wasn't something that I thought was going to happen because I, I wasn't that good. I wasn't as good as everybody else. And um, then I was at a, in a job. I uh, had my career for about 10, 15 years till so I was about 30. And at 30 years old, I opened a store because I was thinking of my future. And so I wasn't surfing anymore, and I wasn't happy. The store was not my passion. And so I wrote my goals, keep surfing. And I wrote everything that I felt I needed to do to be able to keep surfing. And I focused and did everything on that map. And at 35 years old, my career started again. And now, you know, it's just, it's, the sky's the limit. So you, you had doubts about it. What kept you being persistent about your passion? Um, that's a good question. There was, it wasn't doubts in my passion. It was to be able to keep surfing, you gotta pay the bills. And my career wasn't paying the bills, so I figured open a surf shop. And there wasn't any fun in that surf shop. So it was more of a career choice and, and doing changing you know because you know you can figure out what you're passionate about and that's what you love to do and sometimes it changes sometimes you, you might want to go do something else and I thought the store would be a good way to keep going but I ended up not being very passionate about it and so I went back to my true love serving but now you're really at the at the peak of your career uh, I would like you to take us through your 100 feet meter ride and how does it feel like because it's, I think it's very difficult to imagine the adrenaline and all the noises you hear and what the sensation is 
to be in this massive wave of uh, water? Uh, well, first of all, you're sitting there in the middle of the ocean and there's these giant waves <laughs> coming and you, you decide if you're going to go or not. You grab the rope and your driver pulls you up and then you're going out and you see you go over one and there's another one in the whole horizon. And the driver turns and you're turning into the wave. You're holding the rope and you look at the rocks and you're <laughs> focusing on staying in the moment and let go of the rope going really fast. There's so many jumps and bumps. And usually I surf with my heart and I just, you know, just kind of have fun and feel my way through. But this wave was so big that I was really focused on every little aspect of the ride, where the nose was hitting, where the wave was going, everything. And, and I can't really hear anything because I think I found out it's because the wind. All you hear is the wind. But you don't hear the waves. When you're sitting there, you can hear the waves exploding. When you're on the wave, you don't hear it exploding. And you're coming down the wave, and it's super choppy, and then you're looking up. The, the wave was took so long to get the bottom that I got to look back at it two or three times, and then turned at the last minute, and tried to get up to the barrel, and it came and hit me, and then hit me again, and somehow it came out, and then it just kind of disappeared. It was like, a, it was really magic, magic ride. And don't you feel fear when all this is going on around you? There is no element of fear at all? You know, fear is, fear is we, we create fear when we think about what could happen. As long as you stay in the moment, focus on what you're doing, there is no fear. And um, so I really, it, it is work to, to stay in the moment. I mean, you can easily drift off and think about this and think about that. But as long as you stay in the moment, there is no fear. Don't you think that fear someone sometimes pushes us to, to explore even further? I think fear, for some people, it's good because it keeps them from going too far. Um, but fear will also limit us. I don't think it will push us. I think it limits us. So you should always focus on being in the moment, enjoying the moment, and don't let fear set in. Now there's also the double-edged sword of don't go where you're not comfortable. When you, when you start finding fear, that's usually where you're not comfortable. And if you don't go past that, you'll never push those boundaries. So it's a, I don't know, it's a balancing act of whether to go where you're afraid or not. I think you should, people should definitely go where they're afraid because <laughs> usually it's where their heart is <laughs> in the end. And uh, what are your next exploration plans? We'll be exploring just Nazareth. We're really content. The waves are so big there. It's, we're just scratching the surface. There's waves twice as big than what we've surfed there. I've seen waves twice as big. So, so you're going to break the record, your record. I'm not really <laughs> looking for the record. I'm just looking yeah. to ride big waves. And um, we're going to be working with the children a lot, um, working with the, the children to help them follow their passion, guide them to follow their passion and live their dreams, do what they do what they love for their life. Thank you very much for the interview and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Tourist Festival. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right.